Maryland makes a huge statement win against USC. You are Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Down the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase and also i am doing work on insideblackandgold.net make sure you guys go to insideblackandgold.net for all your latest terps news i don't know if you guys missed it this weekend but the maryland terrapins got an absolutely huge statement win on saturday against the usc trojans an absolute statement win for Mike Loxley and that entire staff. And I have to give them a ton, a ton, a ton, an enormous amount of credit because for the Terps to rebound after having such a tough start to the season and to have to play USC at home, a game where I actually did predict the Terps to upset um, early on in the season, Uh, I did change my prediction before the game and said that USC would win the game, but I'm very, very happy to be wrong. But for the Terps to be having such a tough season and for things to not going right, to lose to Michigan State 27-24, to to lose to Indiana, who's now the 13th ranked team in the country, so that loss looks better and better, I feel like, every single week as we continue um, to go on, the Indiana loss looks better and better for the Terps. But to lose to Northwestern by 27 points at home and to still find a way to beat the USC Trojans after being down 21 to 7 in the first half, that's absolutely something that I didn't know Maryland was going to be able to do. And that's a special win for the Terps for that entire program, for the entire school. If you saw how uh, the fans reacted by rushing the field and having all those people on the field, and um, that's a really cool type of thing for the Terps uh, to have the entire student section and a bunch of people rush the field. I don't know when that's ever happened. Um, I don't know the last time that has happened at Maryland. And so for the fact to see that all the fans rush the field, after a huge win for Mike Locks in the program, a program that's been getting a lot of hate, a lot of doubt, because people feel like we haven't been as good as we should be. Um, and I think that's fair. I think that we've put together a season where it, it was like, we should be better than this. We should not be losing to Northwestern 27 by 27 at home, despite being 10 point favorites. Uh, we should have beat Michigan State. Uh, We should have put together a better game against Indiana. Indiana, maybe I'll give them a pass for that game. But the Michigan State loss um, was not good, as, and they had control of that entire game. And you're searching, and you're looking for yourselves, and you're saying, we're 0-3 in Big Ten play. We haven't won a Big Ten game. And suddenly, you got the tough part of your schedule coming up against the big boys uh, in the – terms of the blue bloods you got a team like usc coming to town you have a team like the number one team in the nation you're gonna have to travel to and then also the number three team in the nation you're gonna have to travel to um at the end of the season and so you're you're through the first part of your schedule which is supposed to be the easiest part and you are not looking in a good spot you're owing three in big 10 play your record doesn't look that great and suddenly you have usc coming here at Maryland, and I said it, I feel like the Terps don't have a lot to lose in this game, and I feel like this is one where they can kind of go all out and win the game, and that's exactly what the Maryland Terrapins did. They went all out, and they won the game, and they played like they had nothing on the line in the second half. They played free. They played like they played like a collective unit. They made plays. Sure, there's mistakes in the game, but they made up for it with big-time plays 
uh, for the Terps. And for us to be a USC program, that I don't care. I know that they have had their best year. But that team came into this year ranked as a top 25 team in the country. A lot of people thought that team could compete for the Big Ten. A lot of people thought that team is was going to be a really good team. And I think people still think that's a good football team at USC. I think they have some problems. I think Lincoln Riley hasn't put it together completely. But to be a brand like USC, a team that's usually ranked in the top 20, top 15, it feels like a team that has a lot of people consider maybe the best offensive mind in all of college football after the tough spot that you're in to beat them by one point after trailing at half seven to 21 that's a statement win that's a statement win for the Terps to be able to come back in this game and find a way to beat USC that's something that is not easy to do that is something that doesn't happen um and by the way there's a lot of different ways you can look at this game Maryland only converted uh, two third downs. I was looking at third down efficiency. Maryland was two of 13, and they found a way to beat the USC Trojans, while USC was six of 14. Um, there was a lot of different things. Uh, Maryland lost a turnover battle. We had the fumble, and we had an interception thrown by Billy Edwards, uh, while USC only had one um, interception. So the fact we lost a turnover battle and – we lost the third down conversion rate, and we still found a way to beat USC. That's something that doesn't just happen. That's something that's a special type of win for Coach Loxley and that entire team. Um, and that's something that you just don't see happen a lot. And that's why you saw everybody in my uh, comment section after I said Maryland can surprise USC. Everyone, if you look through my past videos, there's so many people that doubted it and said, no, Maryland's going to get absolutely rocked. Maryland's going to absolutely get killed. And the Terps found a way to win. And I said it too. I said USC will cover the spread. So I can't say I was uh, I can't say I was right about the game, but like I said, I'm happy to be wrong. But I don't know the last time uh we've had this type of win. Um especially under Mike Loxley, I don't know if he has a win that holds this much weight. Um, I know the Texas win was a big one a couple of years ago, and I know we've had some other definitely big wins, but in terms of a, a program, the caliber of USC, I know they're struggling this year in the Big Ten. I know they're not doing their best, but it's a really good football team despite them um, losing to us. And I think that I haven't seen Mike Loxley have that caliber of win for the Terps. And I honestly think that's a really special win for Maryland football um, and a win that you just don't you just don't always have. Um, and so I just want to say an incredible job by Mike Loxley, because a lot of people were. Well, a lot of people were saying, get rid of him. He should be gone. I stood here and said he shouldn't be fired. He's had a, so many good years now. He's had three good years. We've been to three straight bowl games. If he has one down year, so be it. Uh, we're not a program that is, is at the point where one down year, you're like, fire the coach. Uh, we're just not – that's not what we are um, as a program yet. And so I think that this makes me feel a lot better about Mike Loxley, a lot better about um, his game planning and things like that. Uh, I still don't feel good about him coming after a bye after losing 27 to Northwestern. But the fact that we were able to get a win where the fans can get excited about and do, not to mention the amount of recruits and the commits that were all there. I feel like when they a lot of these times they want to come to these big games um, in the past where we play Ohio State, where we play Penn State, where we play Michigan, but we just end up getting crushed. And yeah, I'm not saying they switch from Maryland, but it probably doesn't feel as good of a win. But now the fact that we're able to, we were able to win a huge game with all these recruits there um, and all these commits there, like a Malik Washington, uh, like some of those big uh, dog recruits that we've had in that 2025 class, I feel a lot better about us, about us keeping those guys and about the program trajectory. Um, and after winning a game like that, 
Because sometimes you're in a rut and you need a win like that to turn your season around. And I said USC was the last chance for us to turn the season around because no offense, I didn't see us beating Oregon. They're the number one team in the land. And I don't like, we never match up well against Penn State. Um, they just are too good up front. They run the ball always too well. And so it's really tough. So I said USC is a team that is the last team that I think we have a real chance to like get a real signature upset win and that's what the Turks did and now you create new momentum for this season with that statement win it's no longer you just feel like oh, we haven't even won a big 10 game yet oh we're not even gonna be able to get to a bowl game you feel a new type of energy after getting a win like that and there's the program's gonna get energized more people are gonna want to go to the games more people are gonna be excited about what's to come people are gonna be expecting more um and that's good. That's a good thing. And so I think that beating USC was absolutely a humongous statement win for the Terps. Let's talk about the offense and Billy Edwards. I was really impressed with how that passing attack um, went against USC. I'll talk about that and how impressed I was with the Terps offense after this ad from Zbiotics. Z-Biotics pre-alcohol prohibitic drink is the world's first genetically engineered prohibitic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough warnings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink alcohol, it gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. In the gut. It's this byproduct, not a dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Pre-alcohol produces an enzyme to break the byproduct down. Just remember to make Zybotics your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly and you'll feel your best tomorrow. I'm not 21 yet, but I've heard from everyone that drinks. Every time you have a pre-alcohol before you drink, they notice a difference the next day. Even after a night out, I can confidently say that everyone says that they feel a lot better. I won't lie. I was a bit of people have been a bit on the fence about pre-alcohol initially, but then after they've done it, they feel a lot better and they gave it a shot and they believe that it's the real deal. Here's how to use it. Step one, drink pre-alcohol for best results. Make pre-alcohol your first drink of the night Two, drink responsibly. Pace yourself, hydrate and get a good night's sleep. Step three, enjoy tomorrow. Wake up feeling refreshed and re ready to take on the next day. Go to zbiotics.com slash locked on college to learn more and get 15% off your first order when you use locked on college at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guaranteed. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college at checkout for 15% off. Maryland's offense came up absolutely huge, specifically the passing attack against the USC Trojans. I was really impressed by Maryland's passing attack. I thought that it was absolutely huge against USC, a team that is really tough. Um, to be, I, I still think they're really tough to be. I know their defense isn't always amazing, but their defense hasn't been bad this year. Um, so the fact that Maryland put up the numbers they did passing the football against USC, I thought was absolutely, um, really elite from Billy Edwards. I'm going to talk about Billy Edwards first because, wow, I mean, he, he made some plays. Uh, I got to give credit where credit is due. I've been like Maryland throws the ball way too much. But at the end of the day, you have to recognize that that's kind of what our identity is as a program. And as well as our offensive line probably isn't good enough for us to run the ball as much as we probably want to. Um, other teams probably just have more opportunities to run it just because their offensive lines are better. Uh, so they're just able to run the ball more. But our offensive line hasn't been that good. And so it's really hard to run the ball. So Part of me is like, I want to run the ball more, but at the same time, passing the ball um, is usually how we're going to get the job done. But Billy Edwards threw for 373 yards and two touchdowns, went 39 of 50. That is pretty big time um, from Billy Edwards. 
a guy that I, I wouldn't say has been struggling. I always said I don't think he's the problem, but a guy that hasn't had his best uh, stretch of a couple of games uh, where he's definitely missed some throws and has done things where he probably wished he could get backs. Uh, but he hasn't been playing bad football. But the fact that I saw him come out and rebound against USC at home shows me a lot of what you need to know about Billy Edwards is that he's going to prepare every week uh, really hard because clearly he prepared really well for this game and that he's not going to give up. Um, and he's a gamer, man. I mean, I think we can acknowledge this for Billy Edwards. He's an absolute gamer. Um, and, and he's the guy that I'm really glad Coach Loxley chose to win the quarterback battle. I thought he made a bunch of big-time throws, um, and I thought that uh, he threw that bad third-quarter interception in the end zone. But at the, at the same time, those things are going to happen. He threw the ball 50 times a game. It's hard to throw the ball 50 times a game and not turn over the ball. Um, he also had a rushing touchdown um, as well. Uh, which was important. Uh, and so for me, I saw him absolutely play a huge game where he was down in the game. We were going to have to throw the ball a lot to get back into it. And he stuck with it and got us back into the game. And these three receivers played an absolute huge game. The Maryland passing attack is special. There's something to be said for, for this receiver group. Caden Prather led the team nine receptions, 111 yards. What a game from Caden Prather. Um, an absolute huge uh, game from Caden Prather. Uh, time and time again, pulled in receptions. Nine receptions is no slight. Um, but then the thing was Ty Felton also had nine receptions for 84 yards um, and as well as had a touchdown. So he's continuing to be one of the best receivers in the nation. And and proved it against USC. Billy Edwards consistently looks for those two guys. And those two guys, I think, are the strength of our team. I think it's that receiver unit. I think that's the best part of our team. I think that's the biggest strength of the team. I think that's a part of the team that plays the best. I think that's a part of the team that is the most elite is those two receivers on the outside. I think those two guys are pretty special. I think they're NFL type of guys. But the biggest surprise to me was Glendon, or um, excuse me, Octavian Smith. Eight receptions for 84 yards for Octavian Smith. What a game for him. He's a guy that I think that's, and a touchdown for Octavian, a huge touchdown um, reception. He's a guy that I've always said is really talented, a guy that hasn't quite put it all together. Um, next year to be a guy for us. For him to come out of his shell and have a huge game against USC um, and use some of that playmaking ability that I know has been there, I've always said it. he's one of the most talented guys in that room, and I always said he should be the third receiver, and he is. Um, but for him to go for eight receptions, 84 yards, I think that's got to be his best game. Um, we see we see Octavian Smith uh, go for – three receptions for 60 yards, and it looks really good. But we haven't seen a game where he catches eight balls for 84 yards, and it's consistent play and scoring a touchdown. And he was the real X factor in this game that really brought us over the top on the offense side of things, especially during the football. I thought it was a really special performance for him. And then as well as Roman Hemby had a really good job in the receiving game. Nolan Ray had that big run that really helped us. But overall, I was really impressed with the Terps passing game. Uh, the offensive line is still questionable, especially in run blocking. But I thought the Terps got the job done uh, with the passing attack. Um, and Billy Edwards continues to prove a lot of people wrong and has uh, one of his better games of the season. Who are my MVPs for the game I'll tell you about that after this ad from the Game Time app. Have you ever wanted to go to a game at the last minute like a Maryland Terrapins game, but finding tickets is hard? I've been there before. Buying tickets to your favorite event shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guaranteed, you can stop searching on the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Game time has deals on tickets right at the start of an event and even an hour after it starts. It's a place to find last minute seats and take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. 
Download the game time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Who were my offensive, defensive, and overall MVPs for the Terps? So there's a bunch of different kind of directions you can go with this because there's a lot of different players that played well, and you need that when you're talking about a game where um, a game where you're going to uh, upset a USC team that was seven point favorites, even at home, a team that was quite frankly a little bit probably better than us on paper. I don't think that's much of an argument. Uh, when a team is a seven-point favorite, they're better than you on paper. And so we had a bunch of guys play well, and this might be my hardest week to choose it, but this is what I'm going to go with. My offensive MVP, I'm going Octavian Smith. Eight receptions, 84 yards. I just talked about it, but we don't win the game without him. And teams prepare really hard for Prather and Felton and I'm sure they try and take those two guys away because of how talented they are. And it gives the opportunity for other guys like Octavian Smith, Dylan Wade, Preston Howard, Shalik Knotts to step up and make plays. And that's exactly what Octavian Smith did. He was an X factor in this game. Um, and that's why I'm giving him an offensive MVP because he could have easily not had that production and we would never have blamed him. Like if Ty Felton goes for two receptions for 10 yards in this game, we're going to absolutely say, what the heck, Ty Felton? Ty Felton wasn't good enough to win. If Octavian Smith goes for two receptions um, in 10 yards, I wouldn't have said anything. But the fact that he gave us a humongous game and almost 100 yards receiving, averaging 10.5 yards per reception and a huge touchdown catch, I think to me he has to be the offensive MVP because he gave us a performance that we didn't expect. Prather, Felton, we've kind of seen them play elite, and I don't want to take that away from them, but we haven't seen Octavian Smith put up a game like this um, in his career, and it's against a USC team where we really needed a huge game to happen. My defensive MVP, I'm going to go Le'Veon Scruggs. Uh, Scruggs had that interception that was absolutely huge for the Terps. I don't think we win the game without it. Um, a really tight game. We needed every break we could get. And the fact that he turned over the ball there and got the interception was absolutely huge. Perry Fisher also had um, a, a, a solid game, I thought. And I thought that Glendon Miller had a really good game. Uh, and then Caleb Wheatland, I also thought about giving it to him because he had that last play to break it up. You always feel like teams are going to be able to get in field goal range, but for Caleb Wheatland to break that up was an absolute huge play on the last play of the game. And my overall MVP, I think for me, it has to be Billy Edwards. To be the quarterback of this Maryland team has not been easy. Um, there's offensive line problems still, and I still would say they didn't look awesome against USC. There's problems on the team in a lot of different spots, um, and we struggle. Um, we struggle to run the ball. We pass the ball 50 times a game. We've been in a losing streak. We haven't won a Big Ten game yet. He's coming after Talia, and for him to get a win over this USC team is absolutely huge because I don't know – I don't know if we've had a bigger win than this over the last three years. A program with that gets the caliber of recruits that USC does, a program that is a blue blood like USC is, a program that has so much tradition. Um, and for Billy Edwards to be at home and to throw for 373 yards, two touchdowns, and we needed every single one of those yards. They weren't garbage yards. We needed every single one of them and to lead us to beat USC in a comeback win, it has to go the quarterback because not only just what he did on the field, but it's the intangible stuff. I feel like he's a really good leader for this team. Um, and a lot of ways where I don't want to say Talia wasn't, but I think sometimes we saw Talia's body language and different things like that come out. And it feels like Billy Edwards is more kind of just a little bit less of that um, and, and and really shows showed up in a big-time game where in times we didn't see Talia uh, show up in a big-time game. And I'm not trying to blame Talia, but I'm just – to give us some reference, it's hard to do this. 
Um, when you throw the ball 50 times a game, don't have much of a rushing attack. It's hard to beat a team like USC, even at home. And so really awesome game for uh, Billy Edwards. And I think he's my overall MVP for what he did. That's all we have for today. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Make sure you like and subscribe. We're here every day talking Maryland football and basketball. So thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.